Uh, God bless all of you today. Uh, this is Bishop Thomas Clark, and so delighted to be with you today as we are on a, a weekly basis for these sessions where uh, hopefully the material that we share is relevant and meaningful to you. But I thank God for the opportunity. I pray God is blessing you and your families and uh, those in your life, and also your fellow church members and those that are in your your circle. We thank God for his mercy and grace toward each one of us. Uh, for the last several sessions, we've been talking about the 40-day the period after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, many times we don't associate that being a very important time. We certainly look at the the uh, sacrifice or the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and we understand what all of that means, uh, the, the shedding of his blood and that sacrifice that was made for all of humanity uh, through his crucifixion. But an important part of that and a critical part of that is the resurrection, is the resurrection. As you well know, uh, the fact that Jesus not only was crucified, but he rose from the dead. And that is unprecedented in terms of its universal effect on all of humanity. That is a big part. So we're in that period now. If you're going back some 2,000 years, you're in Jerusalem, and Christ has been raised from the dead. He's He's been showing himself visible to his disciples and, and others uh, so that it is verified by eyewitnesses that he indeed, indeed did uh, rise from the dead. Now, the problem that he has is that there's a whole counterculture, if you will, uh, out saying that uh, he did not rise from the dead and and they are perpetuating that story as well. So it's important for Jesus Christ to make these visible appearances, uh, to interact with those that knew him, uh, that witnessed him, that were part of his inner circle, uh, his disciples, and many of those that he had relationship with, to be sure that they can carry the message of his resurrection. So this part is very, very important. Uh, Jesus prayed that, that very famous prayer in John chapter 17. I reference it often. But he prayed in that prayer, he prayed for his disciples. And he prayed for their ministry, that those that would hear them and that would believe on him through their words, that uh, they would be messengers as well. So we look today, I don't know how much we think about it, but we have the, the Bible, uh, we have what's called the Acts of the Apostles, we have the New Testament writings, uh, we have the writings of Paul, and Peter, and those that uh, were a part of, the, the had the responsibility of passing on the word that Jesus Christ uh, is raised from the dead, that Jesus Christ came out of the tomb. Not only was he sacrificed, not only was he crucified and buried, but he came out of the grave. That revolutionized, that changed the message of the Bible, that changed it. Uh, as nothing else has. We now have hope uh, in, in living again because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, resurrection has always been, it's not an advent of the New Testament, but the universality of the resurrection now is something that is a part of the plan of salvation. All of you that have loved ones or friends and you find yourself in funeral services and eulogies and, and cemetery committals and all of that, the key part of all of that is the hope that believers in Jesus Christ have 
for the resurrection of those that believe him, that have received him, when he returns, that they will be raised from the dead. You close your eyes and end this life with the expectation that one day Jesus Christ is coming back. And when he comes back, when the resurrection happens, you're looking forward to what happens. The model for that, the model for that is what happened with Christ himself. So these 40, ye 40 days where he shows himself by many, many infallible proofs that he rose from the dead. I'm spending time with it because normally we don't spend a lot of time with that. Uh, we celebrate Passover. We celebrate his death, burial, and resurrection. But we don't spend sufficient time with that 40 days. The New Testament writings, the gospel writings, really depend on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They depend on that because that is the message. If a man die, as the scripture has said, if a man die, shall he live again? That's been an age-old question. Well, Jesus Christ proved beyond any doubt, yes, there is hope for life after this existence through the power of the resurrection. So that's why Jesus takes the time to show himself, even to have people touch his hands and touch his side and, and show them that he is alive. Thank God Jesus Christ is alive. Uh, you have hope today because of that. So we want to spend a little more time with this. I think it's worth the time because we pass over this so quickly. Once Passover is over, we go on to uh, our routines and that. But Jesus had to take the time to be sure that all of those that trusted him, believed him, that worked with him, that were responsible for carrying the message, could carry the message, not just in theory, but carry the message as those that saw him, that touched him, that talked with him, that ate with him after the resurrection. He gave us a glimpse of, of this. He gave us a glimpse of this uh, before his crucifixion. In John chapter 11, the Gospel of John chapter 11, you're very familiar with it. But a very dear friend, of Jesus Christ died. It's interesting, uh, you don't find a lot of uh, uh, personal inside connections or friendships that the Bible records of Jesus Christ, but th there were three individuals that apparently he was very close to and would find himself uh, in their presence. That's Mary, Martha, and, and Lazarus. He was very close to them. Well, Lazarus died. Lazarus died and was buried and was in the grave. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, I don't want you to get confused here. This was not a resurrection. He did not receive immortality, but he was raised from the dead. The Bible does not say how long he lived uh, after Jesus raised him from the dead. But there are two messages here in the Gospel of John chapter 11. One is the resurrection itself uh, that, that we're talking about in this series where there's a universal uh, resurrection. People all over the world that are believers in Jesus Christ uh, will be raised from the dead. And there's a resurrection after that one. But there's a thousand year difference between them. Those that died in Christ, those that were committed to Christ, 
uh, upon his return will be raised first. Paul talks about and emphasizes first. And then after that, a thousand years, where there's a thousand year reign of Christ on this earth, then there's another resurrection. That's for those that are unholy or those that have not died in Christ. But that's a whole different series to talk about. What I want to emphasize today is the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It changed the conversation. It changed the expectation of every believer. Christ came out of the grave and was witnessed. So we get a glimpse here in John chapter 11, as I referenced with the, the death of Lazarus. Jesus said something very, very uh, powerful here that we want to remember. In that chapter of John chapter 11, Jesus says this, I am the resurrection and the life. No one else has ever said that. No one else has ever said, I am the resurrection. He is responsible for the resurrection. He is the resurrection. And then he goes as far as to say that, that those that believe in him, that trust in him, that uh, recognize his deity, uh, they shall never die. He says it in John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I want you to let, I want you to let that soak in. I want you to let it soak in because these words, Jesus takes full ownership of the resurrection. Full ownership of the resurrection. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he goes on further to say in verse 26 of John chapter 11, and whosoever believeth or liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And he asks the question, believe it thou this. Now he said that before <clears throat> he raised Lazarus from the dead. He's entered the house of Mary, Martha. Uh, there's grief there. Uh, there are mourners there. There are people from the community there. It's quite an emotional time. It's quite an emotional time. And the question was asked, you know, if you had been here, Lord, if you'd been here, uh, Lazarus wouldn't have died. All of that is part of God's divine plan for him to show through Jesus Christ that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In that chapter, Jesus as he began to prepare to raise Christ from the dead, and, I mean to raise Lazarus from the dead, he knew that this would be an incredible event and folks would have a difficult time believing it. So that's why it was done in a way that there was no question, no question about it. But it was emotional for Jesus too because it was his friend. And you know how it is when you a loved one dies or a family member dies, and you're very close. So Jesus expressed uh, great grief and emotional uh, disturbed uh, about it um, to the point that he actually wept. But in verse 39, as he prepares to raise Lazarus from the dead, Jesus and Jesus said in verse 39, Take you away the stone. Martha said, Jesus, that he was dead, 
And he saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Four days. So there's no question about his death. In verse 40, Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou would believeth, thou should see the glory of God. If you, if you can believe this, if you can trust me, if you can believe that I have the power and authority, you're going to see the glory of God in a way that you've never seen it. That's faith. If you believe, if you believe it, if you can trust me, if you, Martha, if, if, if you can just hold on to the fact that, that I have the power, what did I say? I am the resurrection, I am the life. Believe that. And this is why resurrection becomes so important for all of us to believe in God and the, and, and the incarnation of Jesus Christ because at the end of your life, when life is over, you have the expectation that one day, just as the uh, disciples witnessed Jesus as, as he rose uh, and went back to heaven, and, and the, the, the angel there says, this, this same Jesus, the same one that you see ascending, the same one that you see uh, elevating back to heaven, in like manner, he's going to return. He's going to return. And, and when he returns, he's going to return for those that believe, if those that trust him, those that died in him, those that profess him, those that have his spirit, those that, that have lived for him, the same manner he's coming back. So he simply makes the statement, you can believe. If you can believe, you'll see the glory of God. Well, I know that would have been a hard one for Mary, a hard one for Martha, a hard one for everybody in the room because it had not been done before. The man's been dead four days. Four days. So there's no question that he's dead. He goes on to say in verse 43, And when he had spoken thus, he cried with a loud voice. This is verse 43. He cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Only Jesus Christ, only Jesus Christ has that kind of authority with an authoritative, loud voice cried, called Lazarus to come forth. In verse 44, and he that was dead came forth. My goodness. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. If you were in that room, if you were at that tomb, and you witnessed that, your life would never be the same. Someone's been dead for four days. Jesus calls them by name and says, come forth. They came forth with the grave clothes, 
bound and wrapped as the tradition was, came forth at the command of Jesus Christ. This is in the Bible, not just as a miracle, but it is in the Bible to give you a glimpse of the power and the authority that Jesus has in being the resurrection. Remember what he said before it has happened. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe, liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Though he be dead, I have the power to raise him. This is placed in the Bible to give us a glimpse of the authority that Jesus Christ has over death. No, this is not the general resurrection. No, this is not the resurrection that, that changes mortal uh, to, to immortal. No, this is not the resurrection where corruptible puts on incorruptible. This is not that one that Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But it is one that shows you that Jesus Christ has power over death because he mastered death. He imparts that to you too. The Bible talks about Christ being the first fruit of those that slept. And then after him, those that believe and trust in him. This thing of the 40 days of infallible proofs is designed to show you that Jesus rose from the dead, that he was seen alive, that he was witnessed, and that for all times, this changes the whole dialogue about discussions of Jesus Christ and gives us the expectation of the resurrection as well. Forty days of infallible proofs without a doubt to prove that Jesus rose from the dead takes all the, the controversy out of it. And friends, you must believe that. The same way, the same way that Jesus challenged Martha and Mary and those that were witnesses to the death of Lazarus, four days in the grave. But Jesus says, I am the resurrection. I'm the life. That's why it's important to know Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, as your Redeemer, and lastly, the one that's going to get you out of the grave. The Apostle Paul, looking at it, says this. He says, if Christ be not risen, if he's not been raised from the dead, then I have nothing to preach about, nor does any other minister in terms of eternal life. Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. Understand that. Understand that clearly. You have a wonderful time at church. You sing wonderful church songs. You have all the dancing experience and some speak in tongues and all of that. All of that's fine. But what happens when you die? What happens after you die? What is your expectation? What is your expectation? And I don't know the audience that I'm speaking to. I, some of you may believe in Jesus Christ. Some don't. Some may be uh, affiliated with some other faith or some other belief. And we have the freedom to do that in our country. But I would challenge you, make certain that whatever your faith is, that it has the tenets to take care of you after you die. Jesus modeled it. He modeled it. Look, this is the resurrected body. You need the same kind of body 
that Jesus had. Amen? That resurrected body, that immortal body. The difference is his was holy uh, as no other can be because he was the son of God. But what you will receive is an immortal body, an incorruptible body through the power of the Holy Ghost, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I hope that you are uh, motivated, motivated to be sure that you believe in the resurrection of Christ, that you be sure that you understand that it's going to be the power of God, that spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the spirit that will raise you from the dead, and Jesus Christ is the resurrection. You say, well, what are the limits on this? Uh, how long does this last? The Bible does not put any numerical number on it. You can be dead for five years, one year, one day, or thousands of years. It does not matter. Paul said that this is a mystery. I show you, as he says in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but there will be some that will be alive when Jesus returns, but the dead in Christ are going to rise. They're going to rise first. Doesn't matter what cemetery, doesn't matter what country, may not be a cemetery, it may be an ocean, may not be an ocean, it may be that awful accident that happened that destroyed you. Whatever the case is, it's subject to the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why is Christ taking 40 days to make himself visible? Why is it so important that it would take him that amount of time? Why is it so important for him to do that? So that you have the written record, glory to God, the written record of his resurrection and you believe that, and you trust that, and the Bible tells you the story, and the Spirit of God brings you alive to believe it, and you believe in the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to conclude this for today, but I hope that you're getting this message. It's important. So many of my dearly beloved friends are leaving this world through accidents and sickness and death, and those things that all of us as mortals are subject to. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is important for you to receive eternal life, to be with God himself. It's important. So God bless all of you today. This is a wonderful season, a wonderful time experiencing and reading and thinking about the 40 days of infallible proofs that our Lord and Savior is indeed raised from the dead. What a glorious time this is. Look forward to our next uh, time together. We pray that God will continue to bless you and to illuminate you to see how important the resurrection really is. Let us pray. Father and eternal God, I thank you today for all of your mercy, your grace, and your kindness. I thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ who died for our sins. And I thank you, God, for the power of the resurrection that Jesus Christ himself conquered the grave, mastered death, and gave us a glorious hope of eternity with him. Help us appreciate it and understand that it's for each one of us. Thank you, God. Thank you for this written word. In Jesus' name I pray. Now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee 
and give thee peace. God bless all of you.